March 23rd, 2020, and I am sitting in uh, Mount Crawford, Virginia, getting loaded up. I'm actually going to be heading to Madison, Wisconsin. I'm going to be heading to uh, Circo in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, backed into a door and getting loaded, and I thought that this would be a good time to do an answering comment video. I haven't done one of those for a long time, so why not? Why not? Why not? Uh, first of all, I'll put this up on the screen here, right here. Um, this is it, this was on my um, Trucker Path app, and this is what's going on with the virus. It's kind of a tracking thing that shows exactly what states are really being affected. They're saying that there's 34,745 cases confirmed. 438 deaths and only 188 people have recover, recovered from that in the United States. You can see there New York is actually the worst. Um, California, Illinois, uh, Michigan. Um, you can see down in the bottom of breaking news, the National Guard has been activated in three states. And you can see here cases you know, kind of per region and stuff and how many deaths there has been. Uh, right there's Wisconsin. There's been 381 and four deaths. Uh, one of the guys was actually right in Fond du Lac, where I live. He uh, worked for Mercury Marine, and I think he died Saturday. So yeah, Canada. Look at that. They had they have had 1,465 cases. Not too bad up there. I guess it's just like the zombie apocalypse or something. Uh, they don't go cold or something. But thing is, if you look at this. Um, Alaska is actually pretty red too. I'm kind of not controlling this at the moment. I kind of pre-recorded this because I didn't know if I was going to be able to get back to the site. But you can kind of see here. I, uh, you see, I click out there. See, Canada is actually really red too. It's not. Well, the whole United States is so it's probably just areas of Canada. And you can see over there Europe, and then Asia, China, and all this stuff. And then the numbers from China, actually, if you scroll down and stuff, it says there's only 122,000 cases. Well, that's because China probably not giving out the information, right? Globally, what was it saying? Oops. And you can see there... Globally, there's 336,385 cases, almost 15,000 deaths, and 97,000 people have recovered. It's a low rate of recovery. It's kind of kind of different. So it's pretty cool. Um, I was actually kind of worried clicking on it. I was thinking it might be just some like kind of hack thing or a virus thing, and I'm thinking, ah, my iPhone's got pretty good virus protection. And then I started thinking about it. I'm going to start walking around like this when people ask me, what are you doing? I'm going to say, my iPhone has virus, uh, virus protection on it. <laughs> Instead of a mask, I'm going to wear my iPhone. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, let's see here. we got a lot of comments, guys, to go through, so we'll try to do this here. Um, I thought about doing this whole screenshot where I show... Where I show, like, you know, the comment as I talk about it or whatever, so you guys can read it. But, um, yeah, I gotta do a better job of that, because I can't, I don't wanna do that. Because then you guys might see some of my pictures or something, you know. And, yeah. You know, you guys may, like, you guys may see, like, my vacation picture or something. I'm sorry about that. I had to do that. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, let's go from the newest comments to the older, older ones. Okay, um, I can't remember who this is. Um, somebody sent me a link. There's been a lot of talk going on about hours of service. Here's how I feel about the hours of service. Do I feel that the hours of service is set up correctly? No, I don't. Um, I think that some idiots in Washington have made these little laws up and everything else, and I believe they don't know what they're doing. Um, I was, if you've watched my videos, you know I feel strongly about it, especially like the half an hour break thing. That is the dumbest thing ever. Basically, most of the time what ends up happening is I pull into an off-ramp and I sit on the shoulder of the road staring out the window for a half an hour, you know, until I can drive again. How does that make me refreshed? I mean, you know, it's just... It just is what it is. But a lot of people are saying, oh, you're not affected by HOS because you're hauling food. Now, there's a lot of ways to interpret that. And there can be all kinds of arguments about it. I don't feel that I'm exempt. Um, I know there's other truck drivers out there. We won't mention names. I think we all know what we're talking about. Uh, he believes that he is exempt from it. But, and somebody sent me a link... And it was a link to basically what the rules are or whatever. Okay? And here, and I'm going to read a little bit of this to you. Um, basically says that the president has declared an emergency under act, blah, 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 and all this stuff. Um, you guys, I'm, I'm going to have this up on the screen so you guys can read it. Um, basically, outbreaks and their effect, uh, effects on people and immediate risk of present of the public health, safety, and welfare in 50 states and District of Columbia. Uh, motor carriers and drivers providing direct assistance in support of relief efforts related to the COVID-19 COVID, outbreaks are granted emergency relief. Okay, I'll read that again. By executive of this emergency declaration, motor carriers and drivers providing direct assistance in support of relief efforts are basically exempt from HOAs because you're dealing with this virus, okay? Um, <clears throat> direct assistance means transportation and other relief services provided by a motor carrier or its driver, drivers incident to the immediate restoration of essential services such as medical care or essential supplies such as food related to the virus outbreaks during an emergency. Um, it, it just keeps going on and on and kind of relates supplies or equipment necessary for community safety, sanitation, and prevention of community trans transmission of the virus, such as masks, gloves, hand sanitizer, soap, and disinfectants. Food for emergency restocking of stores. Equipment, supplies, persons necessary to establish mandatory housing, quarantine. It, it goes on and on. This is what the government is good at. This is what the Senate and this is what the Congress does. This is their jobs. There are a bunch of people who sit in there and write things and they try to write it up and say, okay, we did, we made this emergency bill, but it's worded in such a way that eh, you could be found that it's not right. So I'm here picking up a load of yogurt. Now is yogurt going to be essential for the relief of this virus? You can make an argument. You could say it's it's food. Yeah. But if somebody didn't get their yogurt, are they going to die? You know what I mean? But and so and this is what's going to happen. I'm fine with it. And the thing is is that I've been running on my hours. And the thing is is that I'm picking up this load today and I'm delivering Wednesday morning 2 a.m. Now guess what? I have I have ample amount of time to get there. So there's no reason for me to get over my hours. Now if it was an essential thing or something, it would be we need this ASAP. I could see that then. Then I could see going over my hours to get it there because they want it there as soon as possible. That means that you're restocking of shelves and stuff and everything. But I have an appointment so I can make my appointment. So really, there's no necessity for me to go over my hours. 
And I know there's going to be a lot of people that are going to take advantage of this. <clears throat> and here's the deal. They're gonna, and there's, there's been arguments. I have had discussions with people about this. There's, they're saying, well, I'm hauling food, so that means I'm exempt. Eh, are you? I want you to think about this real hard. I got pulled over a little while ago. I talked about it in a video and everything. Somebody, one of the subscribers, felt it was very necessary to do some extra checking and called my boss and everything else and wanted to know the reasons and everything else. It's like, wow. But basically, I was running on personal conveyance. And I was about five miles away from my house. I was running an errand. I was empty. I was not on my way to another load. I got pulled over, got a DOT inspection. <coughs> um, I was speeding just a couple miles over the speed limit. Um, the cop saw that I was on, the DOT cop saw that I was on personal conveyance. It was like, why are you in personal conveyance? I said, because I'm running an errand. That's what personal conveyance is for. I'm not on load. I'm not for hire right now. I'm on my own time. I'm running an errand. You can't do that. You can't do that. And he just started arguing with me. Legally, I was in the right. Okay? I was. But the thing is, is that every DOT cop that you meet has a different perspective on how to read the law. Just as this. this That's why they write these laws this way, with all this wording and stuff. So that it can be construed in a little bit different manner to suit other people so they could kind of have a cop out that's the way they write bills and stuff and so you could you could get pulled over and be running over hours and you could say i'm hauling yogurt and it's an essential item and i can and a dot cop could say yeah you're you're right food is an essential thing and you can run over hours be safe and then you can get pulled over 50 miles down the road on a different dot cop and he'll go yeah um yogurt's not an essential thing you know, <laughs> and so he can read it differently. So everybody has their takes on it and everything else. Um, you're never going to get a straight out thing saying, all trucks are DOT exempt from running with HOS. Run as you need to. It's not going to happen. Because then they're taking, because then let's say the truck driver is like, okay, well, I'm running over hours. And then that truck driver gets into an accident. Guess what? This world is full of lawyers, and one of those lawyers is going to turn around and say, the government told that truck driver to drive, and they're going to sue the government. That's how it comes out. That's all I'm going to say on it. Okay, let's get to reading comments. Alrighty. i got to put the glasses back on. Little cheaters. They're all busted up, too. Oh. All right. Uh, here we go. Speedy. He says, you want to know what sucks? I've been looking forward to summer all winter, and now that it's almost here, we're supposed to stay at home because of this virus thing going around. Burn bums me out. Is that how you spell it? Yeah, it is. I needed to get it closer. My cheater glasses won't work. I thought I said burns me out. Um, um, you, know, you don't have to stay indoors. Um, they welcome you to go out, go for walks. I've been talking to my daughters and stuff, and I'm like, get out and go for a walk a couple times a day and stuff. Um, I see, you know, their dog and stuff. I says, your dog, I love you. I mean, take the dog for a walk a bunch of time. Get fresh air. Um, the sun provides vitamins, vitamin D, you know, or is it D? What is it? Yeah, I think it's D. Um, you know, you get nurturance out of the sun and, and it, the, the fresh air is healthy for you and stuff. So get out. Don't be cooped up in your house and everything. You don't have to be cooped up in your house. Let's see how. Um... I don't know why I highlighted this one, but Carlos says, "Glad you like jalapenos. Welcome to our culture. Culture. We love. We leave. We'll leave the peppers out for you. I love, love, love jalapenos. I like spicy food. Um. Okay, here we go. Jennifer Carstens." Now, everybody needs to remind themselves, Larry is not good at pronouncing things, so sorry if I mispronounce names. Can you please tell us how the virus has affected you? Do your job. Have you lockdowns impacted your routes or where you stay? You mentioned that the dining is not an option, but other parts of your day to life have been impacted. Um, 
really not. I really haven't been impacted whatsoever. Um, I haven't had to change any routes. There's nothing that's, you know, you can't come through this area or something like that. I kind of think there's something that's going to happen like that in, in this week and stuff. I think there's going to be certain spots we're not going to, they're going to be closing down. <coughs> um, just, just my thought on it. Haven't heard anything, but I kind of feel that way. Um, the only thing that's really affected me is not talking to people. Um, I more or less kind of stay away from people more. And um, just, you know, the washing in the hands and trying to be a little bit cleaner, you know, touching things and always trying to clean up before I get back out to the truck and stuff. Um, whenever I'm in some place and I leave out, I'm always hand sanitizing. But the thing is, guys, I've always had a thing with that. You guys know this if you watch my videos. Uh, bathrooms and stuff, I can't touch door bathroom do doorknobs. I can't do it. I, I, it just freaks me out. I always have to do my sleeve. I always have to do it. If I don't have something else, I grab my sleeve and open the door handle. It's just the way it happens. So, no, it really hasn't impacted me yet. Um, pretty much same old, same old. But I probably will be staying out in this truck for a while. Um, it really isn't anything else. It, I'll probably stay out here. Who knows what's going to happen here in the future. But, you know, in a month from now, I don't know if I'll be working. I don't know if it will still be, we'll still be hauling. Who knows? Um, we'll see. But just in case it doesn't, I would like to make as much money as I can now. And also the other thing is my parents. That That's the biggest factor. Um, I do not want to be anywhere near my parents. I don't want to bring anything back to them. So... I'm just staying away. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. James Horsfield. Hor Horsfield. Does anyone know how I can email Long Haul Larry? Please, I need to talk to him. My email is always at the bottom of the videos. Down in the right corner, there's a little down arrow. You click on that, and the video description comes up, and it gives you different links or something else. It's the video description. And my email is always in there. Uh, the emails in there. There's a link that I always put in there for my uh, for my online store and stuff. That's where you can find it. Um, but it's lhl820 at yahoo.com. If you have something pressing and you need to ask me or something like that, go ahead and email email me there. Um, yeah, I got a Texas person back, but. Uh, Let's see, Tom Marshall says, all the paper signing is an example of big government making sure they, they still have a job. I think we pretty much have gone through that. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. It's a waste of paper. It's just, it's, a, it's a waste. I had to sign another one here. Um, right here, Hubert, run, Brun, run. I heard on TV that Trump is going to open driver's hours so freight could be on the shelves quicker. Not sure if that may be you or may be worth talking about. I just did, I just basically talked about it. Um, Bill Forchette says, if anything come, good comes out of this crisis, we'll see how woefully unprepared our country is for the unexpected and dramatically reduce our dependence on foreign countries. Can you say China? Or am I being racist? No, you're not being racist. It is a huge problem. I mean... Even if you buy a vehicle or something like that, made in the USA and stuff, you go work on that vehicle and every part you pull off has got stamped in China or something on it. This really has shown a light on this stuff. And um, not to boast anybody or something or to back anybody, but Trump has been saying this. He's been saying this when he started running for president, that we are way too dependent. So... Just saying. Not saying that I back them or anything, but there you go. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to stir up a hornet's nest. <laughs> Atoll, Atoll, I think his name is. McNoll. That's, that's, that's the best I can do. McNoll. Well, Larry, talking about DOT, your front driver's mirror is cracked. It needs replacing. So technically, you're a violator. And it has it all in capital letters. Yes, my front mirror is cracked. Oh, I wish I, I wish I could just grab the camera right now. There's a truck right over there with a mirror. Side mirror busts it all up on the truck. Um, there is a crack in this mirror. I don't know how it happened. 
I came back home, I jumped in a truck, and when I was leaving, going on the driveway, I looked down and my mirror was cracked. I don't know if it happened before, or I was checking the oil right before I left, and I put the hood down. A lot of times I don't take it down so very gradually because it's got those air ram things in it, so I, sometimes I'll just drop it. It may have gone, you know, dunk, and maybe that little slam or something, maybe it had a little crack in it, and it just, you know, did it more. I don't know. Um, it's cracked about... I'd say about two-thirds of the way across the mirror. Now, here's the deal. I knew people were going to be saying something about this. And I've gotten a lot of comments on it. Um, I just been playing this one because a whole, a, a whole, I don't know how to say his name. It's pretty funny how I'm a violator. It's all capitalized. Um, when I saw it, I knew right away. I was like, oh, YouTube. People are going to be on me about this cracked mirror. And I actually Googled and looked in the DOT rule books and stuff. I can't find anything that says it's a DOT violation to have a cracked mirror. Um, it's still all intact and everything. Yes, I'll have to get another one, of course. But I'm not going to run to the nearest place and, oh, I need a mirror, you know, and pay 600% markup at some place that I don't know or something. and um, Or go to some shop or something and pay these guys, you know, $150 in labor to loosen a couple screws and change a mirror. Um, I need to get both mirrors for both sides, actually. Uh, that one over there has got, like, the, the glazing has come off of it. On the bottom, it's got the spot. So I, I need mirrors on both sides. So I was thinking about looking at a junkyard and stuff like that, but I don't believe it is a DOT violation. Now, I could be wrong, um, but I've read it, and basically it says anything from your steering wheel to two inches in from the top of your windshield cannot have cracks in it or otherwise it cannot if a if a three-quarter inch round piece can cover it then it's okay too that was also in the rules um so i don't know maybe i'm wrong if you want you can send me the link that shows me the you know the thing i just showed before from the government saying that i can't have a cracked mirror i don't know i could be wrong but i couldn't find anything but yes i do have a crack on my mirror it's okay Life will go on. Um, <clears throat> um, Walter Harp says, you hauling any emergency loads? I don't know. I haul food stuff. Is it emergency stuff? I don't think so. I'm just hauling food like normal. Uh, Bryson Gle Greg Gleg says, the 70-hour rule is suspended. It's not. Um, there can be all kinds of arguments back and forth my personal opinion it's not um it i just don't see the purpose in in you know it's taking advantage of it because you're you're taking advantage of the hour thing so that you can keep driving but then when you get there you still can't deliver the load because your appointment's in another day you know so uh sarah saria saria Serian, serena serene serene there we go Getty. <laughs> Hi, Larry. I wish people would stop saying things that are not true. California is not shut down. Yes, bars and restaurants are closed in the public. Drive through, take out. Right, same kind of kind of yelling at me because I was saying that basically California shut down. I don't know. I'm going by what, what I heard. Um, but pretty much, I think it is kind of shut down. Um, just like Illinois shut down now. Uh, I know that Wisconsin, they're making an announcement today that Wisconsin is going to be the same way. Basically, it's everything is shutting down and if you have a non-essential job they're basically saying you're not you're not going to be allowed to go to work either there's your job is going to be on hold right now so it kind of is i don't know maybe shutdown means something different to you you know they don't have armed guards or something like that sitting around i mean it's not like that but you know and the news could have been blown out of proportion that's something that happens uh gavin Come on, guys. Why can't you get easier names? S-I-N-G-H. There you go. Sing. Sing. Um, can you do another story time video? Uh, there's something coming up with that. Okay? You guys got to hold on just a little bit. Okay? There is something coming out about that. Um, Chris Wallace says, Larry, are you going to rebuild, replace the power steering pump when you get home? Probably. Um, I think it's fine. 
somebody made a suggestion that there's a filter in the reservoir and that they thought it was that and they checked the filter and the filter they changed the filter and it stopped that that humming noise everything's working fine it just has that hum in it i didn't know there's a filter in there so i'm going to investigate that and uh do some checking and see if i can figure this out and if i uh, if so i'll change the filter and see if that fixes it otherwise i'm it'll probably it'll be a power steering pump and i'm not going to read somebody else's ass if i'm going to rebuild or if i'm going to replace it um i probably will not rebuild it um they basically just sell rebuilt ones and you take them the old one they're not that much expensive um i could probably but it would probably be more pain of the butt to try to get all the parts to rebuild it than just to get the rebuilt one so if it comes down to it yeah i'll do that when i get home right here anthony uh capelio says he's try changing the filter in the power steering reservoir he said he had the same noise so i will try that he said it was in it was in a peterbilt um, I will check to see if I have a filter. I, I haven't seen one, but I will check it out. Thanks for the suggestion. Let's see. Let's see how. Let's see how. Let's see how. Let's see how. Uh, right here, SP Ray is asking me when I go back to trucking, will I be exempt from HOS laws I, and hauling food stuff? I think we kind of went over that. I could be. I don't really see the necessity of it. You know, it's written so bad that if you had an accident and you were over hours, some lawyer would tear that apart. So, it is what it is. Uh, Mikey1978 says, we can make more money. HOS is suspended, yay. And eh, not really. Let's see, there's a picture of my snow bike. <laughs> I miss my snow bike. Uh, Terry G says, what's with the new shop? Can you please talk about it? I was hoping you would be the mechanic there. Um, I think I kind of mentioned this a little bit in a video. Um, the shop is not going to be, he's not going to have the shop until, I guess, April 2nd now. And I am not going to be the mechanic there. Um, he couldn't pay me enough to move out there. He, he, you know, he could pay me decent money and stuff, but it would have to be a lot of money for me to move out to Frederick, Maryland, because I do not like crowded places, and there was an opportunity that we were looking at. He was bidding on some loads, but I would have to live out there. I actually looked out there for an apartment. The cheapest apartment that I could find that wasn't a dump was like 2,500 bucks, a one bedroom. And I was just like, wow, that's expensive. And I actually found like a, it was like a, it was like a hotel, but it was suites. And they rented them out for like the week or the month or stuff. And it was like really fancy, nice place and everything. And that was like just under two thousand dollars a month, and I was like, "I'll take that." I get a maid every day, <laughs> you know, free internet, free TV, AC. And I'm like, "No utilities." Well, there you go. Don't have to buy furniture. I'm like, "Yeah, I was gonna do that," and I actually was going to, but then the load fell out, and um, and so he couldn't pay me enough to move out there and be his mechanic. But he's he's got some young guy or something like that. He's gonna pay like fifteen bucks an hour, change tires, change oil little basic stuff but I probably he was asking me if I would help him kind of set up things I think like an a like a air compressor and kind of get it set up in the shop so that it you know provides enough air for everything and probably tools and stuff what you know what he needs and stuff so uh, Lee Lod 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 there we go does the valve and size of airline make difference in decibels? Mine is plumbed with a quarter inch line to the factory Peterbilt pole. Doesn't seem to be too loud. Yes, it does. You need to have half inch lines. That's what I got up there. And the thing is, is you can't, okay, so this here, this draw strength thing here for the, for the air horn in a truck, that's quarter inch. The whole, you could put half inch lines to it, but there's it's, the valve itself is still quarter inch, so you're still restricting it. You have to have, and that's the thing. This horn has half inch lines straight from the tank, straight through the valves, from the valve out to the horn, and it's louder. This one is louder than the other one. Um, it's got a, a throatier sound too, I noticed that. Um, my other one, there was some restrictions in it. And I had some half inch line and some not. It, 
it was you know I did the best I could we're just rigging something up on the road but this one here is it's pretty loud man <laughs> pretty loud what in my snow wake I got, I got a lot of pictures of my snow wake you want to see it in here? I'll put a picture up. Oh, look, look at my precious snow bike. I miss my snow bike. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Which one am I looking at? Uh, we can read both of these. KB, he says, doesn't your brother's tractor have a bucket on it? Make a bracket for it, lift the motor out. He's talking about rebuilding my orange truck. Um, yeah, that tractor, if I hook that thing up the motor, the tractor will go <laughs> A motor probably weighs more than that little tractor. There's no way I could lift it up. Has to, has to be a big bracket. And I want a big lift anyways. When I eventually get my shop all set up and build one when I move up to the UP and get a nice big shop built up there, I want to have a nice permanent lift. Uh, Brian LaForge says, does your KW pull to the right? I got a new KW 680 like you got and alignment done and it still pulls to the right. A truck should always pull to the right. When you let go of the steering wheel, and if you let go of it going on the road, a truck should so ever lightly drift to the right. That's the way it's supposed to be set up. If the truck goes to the left, then you then if you fall asleep or something, the truck will go into the oncoming traffic. Alignment places, they set it up so that it just has a small pull to the right, so that if you, something happens, you have a heart attack, you fall asleep or whatever, the truck will go to the ditch, not to oncoming traffic. Um, you could say, well, why can't it just go straight? Yeah, they always pull to the right a little bit. That's what they do. They always set it up that way. You could probably, if you yelled at them enough, if you own a truck and yelled at them and stuff, they probably would set it up and go straight. But that's kind of what they do. Uh, Charlie Heller says, as a former intermodal driver, how do the railroads run the reefers? How do they manage the fuel for the reefers? Um, yeah, you come in there with the reefer on a uh, intermodal tanker or intermodal uh, truck trailer, and you bring it in, and the reefer has GPS, just like this trailer do. The company can manage it and everything, and keep track of the temperature, make sure nothing's happening with it, and everything else. There's also like a keypad. You open up the doors inside, and there's a keypad. You cannot open the doors. It's almost like a safe. They have these bars that go in there and lock into the doors. You can't open the doors. When you get to your receiver, like what, what JB Hunt did, is when you got to the receiver, you had to call them, say, hey, I'm at the receiver, I need the code. And they would look and see that you're at the receiver, and then they could give you the code, and you go up in there, open up your engine compartment, punch in that code, and that released the doors that you could go back there and open the doors to back in and get out empty. Um, they do that for transit because it's on the trains. They don't, you know, can't see it forever. It might be sitting in some yard someplace. So they do that. Um, as for fueling and stuff, um, you have to bring them in full. You have to bring them into the rail yard full. And then uh, once the rail yard takes that trailer into their property, it becomes their responsibility. And they have, like, fuel trucks running around there and stuff, and they'll be topping off tanks. So they're, they're responsible for the fuel until that load gets picked up again in wherever. Uh, let's see. Don't know what that... Why did I highlight this? I don't know. Freddy6969 says, I can, I can prove by math that 50 years old is in fact a midlife time. You're an adult at 21 years old. Lifespan is about 80 years old. 80 plus 21 divided by 2 is 50.5 years old. That's saying that everybody's going to live to be 101 years old. I mean, that, you know, kind of at 21 years old, you're like, that's when you become an adult, right? That's so, isn't that like a quarter way through your life? I don't know. <laughs> And then isn't it three quarters of the way through your life? That's when you got to wear it depends. <laughs> I know I'm going to get tons of people yelling at me about that. It was a joke. Take a joke. Uh, let's see. Uh, Franklin Ron, he says about changing brakes. He says, leave the rollers out, put the springs on both pads, set it back on there. Then a bar on the bottom roller back on then bar up the top one and slip the roller in. Job done. 
Yeah, it could be something that he says that's how the Aussies take care of it. Down in Australia, down under, you know. I, I don't know what kind of accent that was. Um, yeah, I could try that. I I think, I don't know if it'd be hard to get the little spring into place, but yeah, sounds cool. Should give it a try. Uh, Rainy Renner. I don't think buying the snow bike was a midlife crisis. Now, the sailboat? Yeah, that was midlife. That's funny. Uh, J, Jane, J, E, four. I have to say, Larry, those front brake shoes are not very big, are they? No wonder why they're wearing out fast. Uh, they don't wear out fast. Front brakes, usually you get quite a bit of time out of them, actually. Um, I'm surprised the truck doesn't have discs, at least on the front. What year is the truck? My truck is a 2015 says 14 was built in December so they call it a 15 um, but I would say that was probably the first uh, front brakes that were put on the truck that would be my guess so I mean they last quite a bit and they were like really good when I got the truck but then the rear brakes kind of went out on the truck they were getting really bad and they weren't holding very good and stuff so I think the front brakes took a lot of the abuse for like a couple weeks until I got to put new brakes in the back so I think the front brakes did a lot of the stopping, and so so they kind of warm out pretty good. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Chris Wallace getting a little big horny. Larry, what? I don't get it. Uh, Stuart rolling. I don't know which one I highlighted here. Uh, nice work making air horn bracket and the two camera brackets. I'm working on the cameras now. I will have those cameras working in a few days where we'll have multiple cameras. I'm working on it now. Um, he says, I like to see, I see you like plasma cutter. <clears throat> That's one of the best things for welders in the last 20 years, isn't it though? My God, those, those plasma welders are awesome. Um. If you ever seen like decorative art, somebody has like a deer or something, you know, on some piece of metal and it's all like carved out or something, it's actually cut out with a plasma. That's how they do that. I can do that. I just put a print on a piece of metal and I can just go around and copy the print, pull it off. Kind of cool. I was thinking maybe like long haul Larry wind chimes. Uh... Uh, Michael Wallace says, Big Blue is the only truck named Blue at ADL. Baby Blue is gone. Truck number 793. Yeah, Baby Blue, I think, blew up. I think that truck is gone. Um, I don't know what happened to Eric's truck either. Some people ask me what happened to Eric's truck. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't keep up on the day-to-day -day things. I'm pretty much kind of by myself. Uh, let's see. T Taz Gee says... Hey, Larry, what do you think about me heading out to Wisconsin from Ohio, picking you up, and then we go over to John's and enjoy some of Angie's wonderful pinoy, I don't know how to pronounce that, cuisine. Sounds like a great dinner get-together, doesn't it? And then a little birdie, and I can't see the rest of the message because it says read more, but I didn't highlight it, I guess. Uh, yeah, I enjoy, people always pick on me. I enjoy eating over there. They have good food over there and stuff. I just won't eat things that fly at night and can hug me. It's got a bunch of tentacles, and it can hug me. I'm not eating it. If it's a little squeak, squeak, and it flies around at night catching mosquitoes, not eating that either. Sorry, not going to happen. Uh, ben, P-L-A-N-T-E. I don't know how to say it. Planet, I don't know. I'm not going to try it. Hey, Long Haul Larry, Big Rig Ben. Have you noticed a lot of the new trailers now all have riveted taillights? You can't just replace them. From what I hear, it's because they get stolen, especially Mexican-bound freight. Um, yeah, that, at J.B. Hunt, they started getting the newer trailers in, and they had those. Um, when you go to the rail yards, oh, it's a free-for-all for, for taillights and stuff. I mean, every time you go pick up a trailer, there's lights missing. And they started putting those rivet guards on there. And the thing is, is that when you do blow out one of those, you just need to carry along like a screwdriver, a flat screwdriver, and a hammer. And you just put it behind the river, rivet, and you just hit it, and it just cuts the river right off. And that plate can come off, or you can bend it out of the way, get the ball out, change it, put it back on. 
pretty simple. Um, James Zimmerman says, hey, super, yep, invest in good fittings for the train horn because you will be able to transfer all that to your other truck. No, I probably won't. I'll probably leave it in this truck. This is probably going to be permanently mounted in this truck, even if I get out. I tell you, it was, it was a big hassle routing and everything. I'll probably just leave it in. Um, I don't know who it is, too. I think there's a subscriber out there who keeps calling my boss trying to buy this truck. You know, stop, stop trying to steal my big blue. Because <laughs> um, he keeps talking to me about, uh, he says some stuff once in a while about, about a new Volvo. No, I'm not, I'm not driving a new Volvo. I'm driving Big B. Big B, B, B. Big Blue and me are our teammates, so we're staying together. But then he asked a question, uh, do the brakes, do they make an upgrade kit so you can upgrade to brake, uh, disc brakes? I believe there is. I believe that you can do that. I've seen some uh, re restoration of some older trucks, and they've added disc brakes. So there probably is, sure. Um, if it was my truck, I'd probably look into it, but I don't own it. Uh, Donald Dooley says, great video, bought both spring tools and slack adjuster tool. Yeah, they make a special slack adjuster tool. I never did mention that, but I always just use the 716s. Um, there's a couple of them. Some of the models actually use 3.8s, too. Donald Dooley again says, Safe trucking, Larry. May I send a message to maybe get you to work on print shop? Yes, we can print up anything you need. Um, we do a lot of work outside of YouTube. Um, I would say the majority of it is. Um, my daughter and her boyfriend, they've kind of kind of done a lot. Of, kind of almost started up a side business doing that. Um, they're pretty smart, actually. Um, I'll tell you how they did it. Uh, they go out and they play in leagues and stuff, like volleyball leagues and stuff at these different bars and everything. And um, what they do is they go into, they go into the bar and actually take a picture of their logo or something, of the bar's logo or something. And then they go home and they sit, play around on a computer and make a logo out for the bar. And then next time they go, they wear their shirts. And the people in the bar go, where'd you get those shirts from? And they're like, you like them? We printed them. Want to buy some? <laughs> and, they're, and so then they buy stuff from them and they put it up in their bar and they sell it to their customers. Uh, they're pretty smart kids. So Print up anything you want. You just, uh, just let us know and we'll print it all up. Let's see. JB Batelis, Batulis. Great video and a form of like it worth work ethnic. Share with us how much did the new drums cost? Those front drums were expensive. Um, usually drums for a truck are like a hundred bucks. That's usually what they are. Truck, trailer, hundred bucks. Um, those front drums they were 180 bucks. I was like, wowzer. And I said something to the boss, and he's like, yeah, he goes, the last set I bought was like 150 He goes, I don't know, maybe they went up a little bit. And I'm like, 150 is high. I don't know. Let's see, Big D. What's Big D channel? He says, ever, ever snowballed over a house? Question mark? No, but I jumped a motorcycle over one. Snowmobile thing seems way too cold. <laughs> So he jumped a motorcycle over. There you go. Cool. Uh, football 11248 says, You can also use your APU during the winter. Mine does not have heat. My APU does not do heat. I have a separate bunk heater for heat. And I really never have a problem with, um, with battery power. I can shut down usually for two to three days and, uh, and be able to start the truck up again. So I've never had a problem with it. So I've never had to use it for... Sorry about that. Either I'm really long-winded or otherwise uh, my battery was a little low. The camera died. Uh, moving on. Glenn Faust, he says, can't wait to see you start working on a big truck. Hopefully you will have some fun videos of that. Um, yeah, I will. Pl I am planning on doing that. That's kind of what this week was supposed to be. About. I was supposed to be home on Wednesday and I'm supposed to be doing this. And um, this guy just had to walk up. This other guy, he pulled up and he's just sitting here. I don't know what he's doing. Is 
Ryan's acting like he's coming in my spot or something, but they haven't even started loading me yet. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I will be working on Orange Truck, but now it might be a little bit of delay. I don't know. This whole virus thing, uh, you know, go out and, you know, I may just be running for a while. I don't know. We'll see. I will work on it, though. I will get to it. I got to get that thing going. Um... Um, Adweb, Adweb, A D W E N D or B. They asked about the snowmobile trip. They said a uh, snowy range in Wyoming. Yes, it was a snowy range. It was uh, west of Laramie. It's a mountain range, just west of Laramie, and um, south of Rawlings. That's where I was. Um, about that same trip. Um, I got to put glasses back on. Oh, they're starting to load me now. Jack Holbrook says, Larry, two questions. First, beautiful country. And second, yeah, it was. I don't know if that's a question, but yes, it was a very beautiful country. Um, second, do you guys ever carry extra gas with you? On the snowmobiles? No, we never do. Um, we'll go snowmobiling all day long. Pretty much my brother and me, when we go by ourselves, we're out there. We're the first ones out there. When As soon as the sun comes up, we're out and gone. Um, and we usually go, and a lot of times when we're like up, especially up in the UP, we'll be like, I mean, we'll be out to almost dark. It's pretty crazy. And um, we'll still come back with a quarter tank or so. It's a lot different than trail riding. Trail riding, you're full throttle, going down the trails, spending that gas. On the off trail and stuff, you're kind of, man, 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 going slow. You know, it, it's a lot different. And so you don't go through a lot of crazy gas. Um, I have seen guys carry extra gas. They have a canister on the back of their sled, a little gas can back there. There's different setups where you can have it hooked on the back of there, carry it. Um, the snow bike, I have to carry extra gas. Um, that one there, it, the, the gas tank on it is only a gallon. It's 1.1 gallons. I filled it up. It was empty. 1.1 gallons. That's crazy. Um... Oh, this was about the stone billing over the house. Harry Ross says, uh, you're going to spring a leak. Come spring. I suppose acts like that is why people post property and take kindly to sleds and hunters. It didn't even come close. There was probably three feet of snow on top of there, and a guy probably went, I don't know, two feet into it. He wasn't close. I actually went over there. I wasn't going to do it. We saw it, and this guy came up, and we were like, you know, so they're talking about it and us. He's like, I'll do it. I was like, um, okay, let me set up my cameras. <laughs> and um, that wasn't me doing it. Um, but um, but yeah, I, I probably wouldn't have done it myself. But then after he went and did it and everything, I actually walked over and looked at it. It didn't even come close to that roof. So I know that there's no damage. Um, Troy saying says loving the video it's talking about the stone building video he says 850 motor in that in that pool <laughs> i think he means pro um yeah that was my brother's i um i just um uh, i left mine at home because mine was carbureted i have a carbureted sled in my skidoo and you take that out to the mountains you got to change all the jetting and everything else so yeah i wasn't gonna do that he has extra ones um, it was a 2019, the one I was riding was a 2019 Polaris RMK 850 Pro, 163. So. Uh, Tom Gray says, these are the missions of Long Haul Larry to explore strange new environments, to build a go where no snowmobiles on before, and then get stuck. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Uh, Jerry and Sharon Unger. This is uh, talking about the tires and putting the tires back on. They're saying that we torque to 500 foot pounds, is what we torque to. Yeah, 450, 500. Yeah, you're right. That's where it is. Uh, more pictures of my snow bike. Be out of comments. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Lots and lots of pictures. 
I'll show you guys this picture. This was the lodge that we stayed at out there in the snowy mountains when I was there. Look at how much snow was on the roof. That was right, that was right above our door into our room. <laughs> that stuff kept easing over, easing over the roof. The second day, I think, we were there, they went up there with this, uh, you could see in the background, there, it was like a skid loader and it had like a snowblower attachment on the front. He had it up there and he was actually knocking it off and uh, moving the snow around. He's like, yeah, yeah, the boss lady was getting nervous, so she told me I had to come out here and move it. <laughs> uh, I'll show you guys this picture, too. This was driving up into there. You can kind of see... Um, this was right when we were getting snow and stuff. You could actually see there's like a little skiff of snow on the ground and stuff, just in the ditches and stuff. And I'll feel just a little bit. There's maybe an inch or so out there. And then you get up, you start climbing into those mountains, and it just oh, it starts climbing. It's crazy. Here's another picture from out there. Beautiful. There you, right there, you can see the uh, snow hanging over the heave again, how far it was hanging over. It's pretty crazy. I think we're there. I'll show you this picture. This was on the way out there. You can see how many sleds we were carrying. We actually had three up on top of the truck and one on a trailer. Um, we stopped in Iowa. That was some guy. We never even met him or nothing. It was a friend of a friend, and he was going out there, but he was flying out there, and he wanted to sled out there, so we stopped by, and we met this guy at a gas station. We pulled up there, and the guy was sitting there, and he pulled away, and we backed up to it, we went back there and hooked it up to it, we're like, yeah, hey, what's up, you know, yeah, yeah, we'll meet you out there, see you later, and we took off. <laughs> the guy got out there, and he's like, wow, I'm glad to see my sled, he goes, that was weird, he goes, I met somebody I didn't even know, and I just went, and he just bought the sled, like, hours before we got there. He's like, I just gave you a brand new sled and, and uh, went, oh, I hope it's there. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we're all good. Um, I think we're done with the comments. I got to get through these pictures and erase them. I don't know what this guy's waiting for. He's backing up again. He pulled up and he looked at my door and then he stopped and then backed up like he was waiting for my door. I don't know. I think we're I think we're done here with the pictures with the comments. Yep, that looks to be it. Yep, that looks to be all it. I better stop going through all the pictures, otherwise, you know, I might show you guys like another vacation picture. <laughs> I don't know if I'll put that one up or not. I gotta think about that one. That one is kind of uh eh. All right, I'm going to let you guys go. I hope everyone out there is having themselves a great day, great night. Let me get to see this here video. And if you are not, well, we certainly can just try this all over again tomorrow. I will catch you guys later. See ya.